Some black farmers have managed to battle through discrimination to not only preserve their land, but keep it in the family. This week, I traveled to K&J Farms in Elmar and talked to farmer Kenny Barty. He told me about the hard work and legacy of his grandfather who faced discrimination as a black farmer. He also spoke about his experience running a farm in the Garden State. Kenny, I am a long way from home. We are in South Jersey on this beautiful farm. What, more than 60 acres, I think? Yeah, like um, 60, about 65, I think. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So tell me a little bit about what you grow here. We grow, we grow all types of vegetables. We grow cucumbers, yellow squash, green squash, okra. Beets, lettuce, kale, collards, tomatoes, <laughs> peppers, about four or five different type of beans. We got sweet potatoes, we got corn, we got fiber wow. beans, black eyed peas, I'm cranberry trying, beans. I'm just trying to understand <laughs> how you keep track of all of this. Paperwork. Really? <laughs> Paperwork. <laughs> Paperwork. And walking. And yeah, you said you walking. like to walk Yeah, the I walk bar. around a lot and little sections is all mapped out. Right. It all has a lot number. Yeah. You can find it. I can go on a piece of paper and find everything. For viewers who will be watching this, it is very serene. I think I could put out a picnic blanket and just like take a nap. It's just so calm, but I know that this was a labor of love. Yeah. And this was at one time your grandfather's. It's now handed to you. This is a, a family. Yes. A, a family farm. So yeah. tell me a little bit about what's, what is it like to be a farmer in 2023? Whew, it's hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard with the weather. Like last summer was like one of the driest years. So that it was a bad year last year. This year is kind of, you know, here and there, you know, but it's weather, man. Weather, getting stuff sold, getting stuff, mm -hmm. fighting against, see, we make it a little harder. You see, we got fence right here, but most of the property doesn't have fence. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the good stuff we put inside the fence mm -hmm. that the deer don't eat. And we are in the Garden State, and yeah. I think people forget that, right? Because you're very passionate about mm -hmm. farming, and you are passionate about taking over the farm mm -hmm. and making this your career. Why is that, and why is it so important now? Trying to see something, like, happen, all the hard work you put in over the years is, like, trying to get to that point where this is where all the hard work, it finally paid off basically, mm. like the hard work you've been doing. Because so far it's, it's, it becomes a passion, but you gotta also remember it's business. Right. You know, my grandfather, his love for it is like, sometimes I think he love it more than he loved the money. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's business, America. He got over 40 years doing it. He retired, I picked it back up, and this is where we at now. Well, we know that you've also totally modernized it. You have an Instagram oh, page yeah, for it, yeah. right? You don't understand that right, stuff, right, man. Right, right, right. My right, Instagram, right. you gotta chat, right. you gotta make it where people- It's a business. Yes, right. like first two years I was forming, a lot of people came to the stand, and they were like, I never knew there was a black former. Some people never seen a black former before, and I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah, and I, man, they yeah. travel just to do that. Just to piggyback off that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like in that respect, you are a role model, yeah. right? And you are setting the example and you are representing mm -hmm. for other young men and, yeah. and children who may aspire to be a farmer. Yeah. I think that's really special. But in addition to the farm, what I love is that you your crops are also used in schools. Coming up this year, we started with um, Cunningham Academy mm -hmm. in Violin, New Jersey. We, we uh, they had a program, they got a grant for a greenhouse. That greenhouse wasn't being used, so I went in there with the kids. And everything you see behind in this backfield, the kids planted by seeds. Wow. And what we did, once they got a lift, we brought it out here and transplanted. And when the kids will come back and see exactly what, what the seed did. Wow. Yeah. Tell me about why that was so important, that farm to school relationship, connection. What got them out of classrooms and it helped them like see there's more to, you know, you, you got to put in some work, but it's right. like growth. It's like as a kid growing up, right. you grow up, right. the plant's growing, right. you plant is a seed, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And it helped as far as business-wise, it was able, I was able to use the room to get more plants out, to get more, you know, get stuff more to sell. We know that there have been challenges. Last time we spoke, 
um, we revisited some legislation, yeah. right? <laughs> Trying to be passed because <laughs> even though you're making waves as one of the few black farmers in the area, we know that there has been discrimination yes. um, and challenges and what your grandfather spoke to your grandfather. Tell me about where that stands. Where are you with that? Well, I like to get it where before we plant it, we already have a buyer for it. So we don't have to go through all the stuff my grandfather went through in the past years. Mm -hmm. So that this year, actually, probably 90% of our crops will be going to common market. Like, and they're already, everything you see out here is going to either a hospital, a school, or a food bank somewhere here in New Jersey. So we don't have to go, uh, uh, let's pick it and see if somebody will buy it. We don't have to do that no more. It's already going to a table, to a school, or somewhere. It's already put to use. What are you most proud of on this journey? Proud of after all these years, having somewhere for the produce to go not having to worry about we done spent money on having people help it get us get it to this point and we have to throw it away. And I'm most proud of having a contract, having a home for it. Having a home for the produce. That's what I'm most proud of. And for young black men and women who will be watching this, mm -hmm. who may aspire to be a farmer one day yeah. or work on a farm, what would you say to them? Despite all those challenges and barriers, what would you tell them? Don't take shortcuts, man. If you're going to get out there and do it, do it. If you put your mind to it, do it. Don't say, uh, this is hard, I'm done. I see a lot of people do that. Don't do it. Just keep going till you, till you get to it. This didn't happen overnight with, right. with me. This comes from years and years of paying attention, watching, taking notes, seeing what, what the years can bring. Plant that seed. And watch and, it grow. And watch it grow. grow. Thank you so much, Kenny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more clips and episodes of NJ Business Feet, subscribe to the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel.